The morning sunlight streamed through the kitchen window, casting a warm glow over the tiled floor. I sipped my coffee, savoring the rich aroma as I mentally prepared for the day ahead. Just another ordinary morning, or so I thought. You promised me she'd never find out. Mara's shrill voice pierced the tranquility, muffled but audible through the thin walls. My heart skipped a beat. I strained to listen, gripping the mug tightly, then start acting like it never happened. Ted's hushed tone responded, laced with an urgency I'd never heard before. A knot formed in my stomach as their heated exchange continued, words indecipherable but tones unmistakable, anger, desperation, and something darker lurking beneath. Mara had been staying with us for a few weeks, claiming she'd fled an abusive relationship. At first I welcomed her presence, offering our home as a sanctuary, but her behavior grew increasingly erratic, and Ted's unwavering support for her raised red flags. The argument subsided, and I heard footsteps approaching the kitchen. Mara swept in, her face flushed, eyes narrowed as she brushed past me without a word. Ted followed, his expression tense. "'Everything okay?' I ventured cautiously. "'Fine,' he muttered, avoiding my gaze. "'Just a misunderstanding.' "'Lies.' I could sense it in the way his jaw clenched, the way his fingers tapped an agitated rhythm on the countertop. Hannah shuffled in, her eyes puffy from lack of sleep. Morning, she mumbled, reaching for a bowl of cereal. Mara draped an arm around her shoulders, her demeanor instantly shifting to one of saccharine sweetness. Good morning, sweetheart. Did you sleep well? Hannah shrugged, her gaze downcast. My heart ached for my daughter, caught in the crossfire of this escalating family drama. Mara's presence was taking a toll on all of us, driving an invisible wedge between the once unshakable bonds we shared. As the day wore on, Mara's behavior grew increasingly erratic. She lounged on the couch, flipping through channels, making no effort to sort out her living situation or seek employment. Ted catered to her every whim, his devotion bordering on obsession. Don't you think it's time Mara started looking for a job? I broached the subject gently over dinner. Ted's fork clattered against his plate. She's been through a lot, Evelyn. Give her some time to heal. Mara shot me a triumphant smirk, her eyes glinting with a challenge. That night, as I lay awake beside Ted's sleeping form, doubt swirled in my mind. What was the dark secret they were so desperate to conceal? And why was Ted so blinded by his loyalty to Mara, even as her presence threatened to fracture our family? The following morning, I confided in Dolores, my closest friend and colleague. Her brow furrowed as she listened intently, nodding in understanding. I went through something similar years ago, she admitted, her voice heavy with remembered pain. My husband's sister wormed her way into our lives, sowing seeds of discord until everything fell apart. Her words ignited a spark of determination within me. I would not let Mara destroy what Ted and I had built over decades of love and commitment. One way or another, I would uncover the truth and protect my family, even if it meant shattering the fragile facade we'd been living. The days that followed were a whirlwind of tension and unease. Mara's presence had become a constant source of friction, her every action stoking the flames of my suspicion. One evening, as I cleared the dinner dishes, Mara sauntered into the kitchen, her movements languid and entitled. Without a word, she opened the fridge and began rummaging through its contents, leaving a trail of discarded items in her wake. Mara, I said, struggling to keep my tone even. Don't you think it's time you started looking for a job, or at least contributing around the house? She whirled around, her eyes narrowing. Excuse me? You've been staying with us for weeks now, I pressed on, emboldened by the righteous indignation bubbling within me. It's time you started taking steps to rebuild your life. Mara's lips curled into a condescending sneer. And who are you to tell me what to do? This is Ted's house, not yours. The words stung, but before I could respond, Ted entered the kitchen, his brow furrowed. What's going on? he demanded, his gaze flickering between us. Your wife seems to think she can dictate how I live my life, Mara spat, her voice dripping with venom. Ted's expression hardened as he turned to me. Evelyn, Mara's been through a lot. She needs our support, not criticism. I gaped at him, incredulous. Support? Ted, she's taking advantage of us. She hasn't lifted a finger to help herself. That's enough, he snapped, his eyes flashing with a rare anger. Mara is family, and she'll stay as long as she needs to. Mara shot me a triumphant smirk, reveling in her victory. 
Later that night, as Ted slept soundly beside me, I lay awake, stewing in a potent brew of anger and betrayal. How could he be so blind to Mara's manipulative ways? The next day at work, I confided in Dolores, my closest friend and confidant. Her eyes widened as I recounted the escalating tensions at home. I went through something similar years ago, she admitted, her voice heavy with remembered pain. My husband's sister wormed her way into our lives, sowing seeds of discord until everything fell apart. I listened, rapt, as she shared her cautionary tale, the echoes of her experience reverberating through my own. Don't let her tear your family apart, Evelyn, Dolores urged, her gaze intense. Gather evidence, document everything, expose her for who she really is before it's too late. Her words ignited a spark of determination within me. I would not let Mara destroy what Ted and I had built over decades of love and commitment. In the days that followed, I became a silent observer, cataloging every suspicious behavior, every lie that slipped from Mara's lips. The pieces began to fall into place, painting a disturbing picture of deceit and manipulation. Ted's uncharacteristic secrecy, the way he jumped to Mara's defense at every turn, the lingering glances they exchanged when they thought no one was watching— it all pointed to a profound, twisted bond that ran deeper than mere sibling loyalty. As the evidence mounted, so too did my resolve. One way or another, I would unravel the tangled web of secrets that threatened to suffocate us all. The whispers began innocuously, like specks of dust catching the light. Easy to dismiss, but impossible to ignore entirely. It started at a community meeting, where I found myself seated next to Mrs. Henderson, a kind-hearted widow known for her occasional lapses into gossip. As the meeting droned on, she leaned in conspiratorially. "'I saw your sister-in-law the other day,' she murmured, her eyes alight with the thrill of shared secrets. "'With a man.' My heart skipped a beat. "'A man?' I echoed, struggling to keep my voice steady. Mrs. Henderson nodded sagely. "'Didn't look like her husband, if you catch my drift. They seemed awfully cozy. The implications hung heavy in the air.' casting doubt on Mara's carefully constructed façade of victimhood. If she had indeed fled an abusive relationship, why would she be canoodling with another man so brazenly? As the days passed, more specks of truth began to emerge, each one chipping away at the fragile veneer of lies. Neighbors shared furtive glances and hushed whispers, their eyes following Mara with a mixture of pity and suspicion. Driven by a potent cocktail of anger, betrayal, and the fierce need to protect my family, I began my own quiet investigation. I documented every inconsistency, every slip of the tongue that hinted at Mara's deception. The evidence mounted, painting a disturbing picture of a woman unraveling at the seams, her carefully crafted persona crumbling under the weight of her own lies. One evening, as Mara lounged on the couch, regaling Hannah with tales of her newfound freedom— I could no longer bite my tongue. "'Cut the act, Mara,' I snapped, my voice trembling with barely contained fury. "'We all know you're lying about being abused.' Mara's eyes widened, her mouth forming a perfect O of mock surprise. "'Evelyn, darling, whatever are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me,' I pressed on, emboldened by the righteous fire burning within me. "'I know you've been seeing someone behind our backs.' For a moment Mara's mask slipped— her expression twisting into a sneer of pure contempt, but just as quickly it was gone, replaced by a sickly sweet smile that sent shivers down my spine. "'You're letting your imagination run wild,' she purred, her voice dripping with condescension. Stress can do that to a person. Ted, ever the loyal brother, rushed to her defense. "'Evelyn, that's enough. Mara's been through hell. She doesn't need your baseless accusations on top of everything else.' The gulf between us yawned wider, a chasm of mistrust and betrayal that threatened to swallow us whole. Hannah, caught in the crossfire, retreated further into Mara's poisonous embrace, seduced by her siren song of rebellion and freedom. As the tension mounted, I knew I was fighting a losing battle, at least for now, but I refused to surrender, to let Mara's web of lies ensnare us all. One way or another, I would expose her for the manipulative parasite she was— even if it meant sacrificing everything in the process. The lines had been drawn, and there was no turning back. It was us against them, a battle for the very soul of our family. And I would emerge victorious, no matter the cost. The evidence was damning, a twisted tapestry of lies and deceit that threatened to unravel the very fabric of my life. Yet, even as the truth stared me in the face, 
Ted remained stubbornly blind, his loyalty to Mara an impenetrable shield against reason. It was Dolores who finally convinced me to take the plunge to seek professional help in uncovering the depths of Mara's treachery. Trust me, Evelyn, she urged, her eyes filled with the wisdom of hard-won experience. Sometimes you need an outside perspective to see what's right in front of you. And so, with a trembling hand, I dialed the number of a private investigator recommended by a friend, setting in motion a chain of events that would forever alter the course of my life. The investigator, a grizzled ex-cop named Frank, wasted no time in laying out the sordid truth. Mara's tale of fleeing an abusive relationship was a fabrication, a smokescreen to conceal her true motives, financial exploitation, and a twisted desire for control. She's been bleeding your husband dry for years. Frank revealed, his voice tinged with disgust, racking up debts, draining his accounts, and he's been enabling her every step of the way. The words hit me like a physical blow, stealing the breath from my lungs. How could Ted, my partner of two decades, have allowed himself to be so thoroughly manipulated? But the revelations didn't stop there. Frank slid a grainy photograph across the table, its contents shattering what little remained of my illusions. It was Ted and Mara, their bodies intertwined in an unmistakable embrace, their expressions a twisted amalgam of passion and guilt. This was taken a few years back. Frank explained, his tone matter-of-fact. Looks like their relationship went a little deeper than just siblings, if you catch my drift. A wave of nausea washed over me as the implications sank in. The secrets, the lies, the blind devotion, it all made a sickening sort of sense now. Armed with the damning evidence, I confronted Ted, my heart pounding with a mixture of dread and righteous fury. I expected anger, denial, perhaps even remorse. What I didn't expect was the cold, dismissive indifference that greeted me. So what? He spat, his eyes devoid of the warmth I had once cherished. Mara's the only one who truly understands me, the only one who's ever really been there for me. The magnitude of his betrayal, the depth of his loyalty to Mara, left me reeling. In that moment I realized that the man I had loved, the man I had built a life with, was little more than a stranger. As the chasm between us grew wider, Hannah's allegiance shifted, her admiration for Mara's brand of freedom eclipsing any loyalty she once felt towards me. I watched, helpless, as my daughter drifted further into Mara's toxic orbit, seduced by the allure of rebellion and false promises. The battle lines had been drawn, and I found myself standing alone, a solitary figure fighting against the insidious forces that threatened to tear my world asunder. But I would not surrender, not without a fight. Mara's web of lies would be exposed, her carefully constructed facade shattered beyond repair. It was the only way to salvage what remained of my family, to reclaim the life that had been stolen from me through years of manipulation and deceit. And if Ted couldn't see the truth, if he insisted on clinging to his misguided loyalty, then so be it. I would burn it all down if I had to, watching the ashes of their lies scatter to the wind because in the end the only thing that mattered was justice, and I would have mine, no matter the cost. The dam of my emotions finally burst, years of pent-up frustration and betrayal spilling forth in a torrent of rage. I had tried, God knows I had tried, to reason with Ted, to make him see the truth about Mara's manipulative ways. But his blind devotion was impenetrable, a fortress of misplaced loyalty that no amount of evidence could breach. It was the final straw when I discovered Mara's plans to siphon money from our joint account, a brazen act of theft that would have left us financially crippled. Confronting her, I was met with a smug sneer and a dismissive wave of her hand. "'What's yours is mine, dear sister-in-law,' she purred, her eyes glinting with malicious glee. "'Ted would never deny me anything.' Something snapped within me at those words, a primal fury unleashed by the depth of her audacity— her utter disregard for the havoc she had wrought upon our family. Before I could stop myself, my hand lashed out, striking Mara's smirking face with a resounding slap. She recoiled, her expression contorting into one of outraged disbelief before launching herself at me with feral intensity. We grappled, a tangle of flailing limbs and muffled curses, until Ted burst into the room, his face pale with shock. "'What the hell is going on?' he bellowed, his eyes darting between us. Mara, ever the master manipulator, was the first to recover her composure. 
Your wife has lost her mind, Ted, she whimpered, clutching her reddened cheek. She attacked me, unprovoked. Ted's gaze shifted to me, a maelstrom of conflicting emotions swirling in his eyes. For a fleeting moment, I dared to hope that he might finally see the truth, that the veil of Mara's deceit would be lifted. But then his expression hardened, and the words that followed felt like a physical blow. If you can't accept Mara's presence in our home, Evelyn, then perhaps it's time for you to leave. The air seemed to crystallize around us, each syllable hanging heavy with the weight of his betrayal. In that moment, the depth of Mara's manipulation, the extent of Ted's blindness, became painfully clear. Mara's lips curved into a triumphant smile, her eyes alight with smug satisfaction. She had won, and we both knew it. Later that night, as Ted's snores drifted through the bedroom door, I sat on the edge of the bed, my mind a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. Anger, heartbreak, a simmering desire for vengeance, they all swirled together, a potent cocktail of turmoil. It was then that I made my decision, a choice born of sheer desperation and the knowledge that there was no other way. Slipping into Hannah's room, I gently shook her awake, pressing a finger to my lips to silence her startled gasp. Pack a bag, I whispered, my voice trembling with barely contained emotion. We're leaving. Hannah's eyes widened, but to her credit, she didn't argue. Perhaps she sensed the finality in my tone, the unspoken truth that our lives as we knew them were over. We gathered what we could, moving swiftly and silently through the house that had once been our sanctuary, now tainted by the specter of Mara's malign influence. As we slipped out into the night, Ted's enraged bellow echoed behind us, but I didn't falter. Mara's mocking laughter rang in my ears, a twisted symphony of triumph and disdain. But I would have the last laugh, I vowed to myself as we climbed into the car and peeled away from the curb. This was not the end, but merely the beginning of a reckoning long overdue. Dolores welcomed us with open arms, her home a temporary refuge from the storm that had upended our lives. And as I lay awake that night, cradling Hannah's sleeping form, a newfound resolve took root within me. Mara's reign of deceit would end, her carefully constructed façade shattered into a million pieces. And if Ted insisted on clinging to his misguided loyalty, then so be it. I would burn it all down if I had to, watching the ashes of their lies scatter to the wind. Because in the end, the only thing that mattered was justice, and I would have mine, no matter the cost. The sanctuary of Dolores' home provided a temporary respite from the storm that had upended our lives, but it did little to quell the tempest of emotions raging within me. Anger, heartbreak, a simmering desire for vengeance, they swirled together, a potent cocktail of turmoil that threatened to consume me whole. It was Jackie, my ever-resourceful younger sister, who provided the lifeline I so desperately needed. With a knack for investigative work that bordered on the uncanny, she delved into the twisted history that bound Ted and Mara, unearthing secrets that left me reeling. "'You're not going to like what I found, Ev,' she warned, her expression grave as she handed me a stack of documents, her voice tinged with a mixture of pity and disgust. The words seemed to blur before my eyes as I pored over the damning evidence— financial records detailing years of Mara's systematic exploitation, intimate photographs that hinted at a relationship far more sordid than mere sibling bonds. They were lovers, Jackie confirmed, her tone flat and devoid of emotion. And not just a fling, either. This has been going on for years, maybe even decades. The revelation hit me like a physical blow, stealing the breath from my lungs. Ted, the man I had loved and trusted implicitly— had been harboring a dark secret all this time, his loyalty to Mara rooted in a twisted, incestuous past. As the shock gave way to heartbreak, a new emotion began to take root, a burning, all-consuming fury that threatened to scorch everything in its path. Mara's return, her calculated manipulation, had been a ploy all along, a means to exploit Ted's misguided devotion for her own financial gain. The pieces fell into place with sickening clarity. Ted's unwavering support, his dismissal of my concerns, his utter blindness to Mara's machinations, it all stemmed from the leverage she held over him, the secrets they shared, the twisted bond that had ensnared him in her web of deceit. Bile rose in my throat as I recalled the smug satisfaction etched on Mara's face, the way she had reveled in her triumph as I packed my bags and fled our home. She had won, or so she thought, 
secure in the knowledge that Ted's loyalty was hers to command. But I would not be so easily defeated, not when the stakes were this high. Mara's reign of terror would end, her carefully constructed facade shattered into a million pieces, and if Ted insisted on clinging to his misguided loyalty, then so be it. I would burn it all down if I had to, watching the ashes of their lies scatter to the wind. Fueled by a potent cocktail of rage and determination, I began to plot, to gather allies and lay the groundwork for Mara's downfall. Dolores, ever the steadfast friend, was the first to offer her support, her own experiences lending weight to my cause. Expose her for the parasite she is, she, she urged, her eyes alight with a righteous fire. Drag her deceit into the light and let the world see her true colors. And so, with each passing day, I chipped away at Mara's carefully constructed facade, discreetly gathering evidence and rallying support from those who had witnessed her manipulative ways firsthand. The community that had once welcomed her with open arms began to turn, their eyes growing wide with realization as the truth unraveled before them. Whispers of disgust and condemnation followed in Mara's wake, a harbinger of the reckoning to come. As the noose tightened around her, I could sense her growing unease, the cracks in her armor beginning to show. But still, she clung to her delusions of invincibility, secure in the knowledge that Ted's loyalty was her shield against any consequences. Little did she know the ground was crumbling beneath her feet, and soon there would be no one left to catch her when she fell. The stage was set, the pieces carefully arranged like a masterful game of chess. All that remained was to make the opening move, to unleash the devastating truth and watch as Mara's meticulously constructed facade crumbled around her. Under the guise of a neighborhood watch meeting, I had rallied the community, discreetly gathering those who had witnessed Mara's manipulative ways firsthand. One by one, they trickled into the hall, their expressions a mix of curiosity and thinly veiled disdain. Mara swept in, resplendent in her delusions of invincibility, her arm looped through Ted's as if to flaunt the depth of his misguided loyalty. A smug smile played upon her lips as she surveyed the assembled crowd, oblivious to the reckoning that awaited her. As the meeting commenced, I allowed the proceedings to unfold, biding my time until the opportune moment. When at last the floor was open for community concerns, I rose, my heart pounding with a heady mix of anticipation and righteous fury. I have something to share. I announced, my voice ringing out with a clarity that belied the turmoil churning within me. Something that concerns the truth behind Mara's presence in our community. Mara's brow furrowed, her eyes narrowing as she sensed the shift in the atmosphere, the undercurrent of tension that had begun to ripple through the room. One by one, I presented the damning evidence— financial records detailing her systematic exploitation of Ted, intimate photographs that laid bare the sordid nature of their relationship. With each revelation, the gasps and murmurs of disgust grew louder, a rising tide of condemnation that threatened to drown out Mara's feeble protests. Lies, she spat, her veneer of composure beginning to crack. All lies, concocted by a bitter, jealous woman, but the avalanche had been set in motion and there was no stopping its inexorable descent. Neighbors stepped forward, their voices trembling with outrage as they recounted the whispers, the furtive glances, the growing sense of unease that had plagued our community since Mara's arrival. Ted, his face ashen, seemed to shrink in on himself, the weight of his betrayal finally bearing down upon him with crushing force. As the truth was laid bare, the blind devotion that had once been his shield crumbled, leaving him exposed and vulnerable. Mara's mask slipped, her carefully cultivated facade of victimhood dissolving into a twisted rictus of rage and desperation. She lashed out, hurling accusations and insults like a cornered animal, but her words fell upon deaf ears. The community had spoken, and their verdict was damning. As the meeting drew to a close, a hush fell over the room, a pregnant pause that seemed to stretch into eternity. It was in that moment that Ted turned to me, his eyes brimming with unshed tears, his expression a haunting amalgam of shame and remorse. Evelyn, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. I'm so sorry, for everything. His plea for forgiveness hung in the air, a fragile entreaty that I knew, deep down, could never be granted. It's too late for apologies, Ted, I replied, my tone laced with a finality that brooked no argument. You made your choice, 
and now you have to live with it. Mara, her face contorted into a mask of pure hatred, opened her mouth to hurl one final volley of vitriol. But the words died on her lips as she took in the sea of condemning glares, the palpable weight of the community's collective disdain. In that moment she knew she had lost, her carefully constructed empire of lies reduced to ashes at her feet. As we departed, leaving the shattered remnants of Mara's disgrace behind, I felt a sense of grim satisfaction wash over me. The battle had been won, but the scars ran deep, a testament to the depths of betrayal and the resilience it had taken to emerge victorious. Ted's fate remained uncertain, a man adrift in the wreckage of his own making. But for me, the path forward was clear. A future forged from the ashes of Mara's deceit, a life reclaimed from the clutches of manipulation and lies. And though the road ahead would be long and arduous, I knew that with Hannah by my side and the unwavering support of those who had stood by me, I would emerge stronger, more resilient than ever before. For in the end, the only thing that mattered was justice, and I had claimed mine, once and for all. The aftermath of Mara's downfall was a whirlwind of emotions, relief, vindication, and a profound sense of loss all intermingled, leaving me adrift in a sea of conflicting feelings. As the dust settled, the true extent of Ted's betrayal became increasingly apparent. His devotion to Mara had been a twisted, all-consuming obsession, blinding him to the reality of her manipulative ways and the havoc she had wrought upon our family. In the end, the man I had loved, the man I had built a life with, was little more than a stranger, a shell of his former self, hollowed out by years of deceit and misplaced loyalty. And so, with a heavy heart, I made the decision to sever ties completely. Ted, shattered and remorseful, retreated into the shadows, his once unwavering devotion to Mara, now a source of profound shame and regret. As for Mara, her disgrace was complete. Ostracized by the community she had so callously exploited, she slunk away, her carefully cultivated facade in tatters, her true nature laid bare for all to see. In the aftermath of their departure, Hannah and I were left to pick up the pieces— to rebuild the lives that had been so thoroughly upended by the forces of manipulation and betrayal. It was a daunting task, but one that we tackled with a newfound sense of resilience and determination. With the steadfast support of Dolores and Jackie, we embarked on a journey of healing and self-discovery, oh, shedding the shackles of Mara's poisonous influence and reclaiming the freedom that had been stolen from us. For Hannah, the road was particularly arduous. The charismatic allure of Mara's brand of freedom had ensnared her, leaving her adrift and vulnerable in the wake of her aunt's downfall. But with the help of a compassionate therapist, she slowly began to untangle the web of lies and manipulation, emerging stronger and more self-assured with each passing day. As for me, the process of healing was a cathartic one, a journey of rediscovery that allowed me to shed the bitterness and anger that had once threatened to consume me. In the ashes of Mara's deceit, I found a newfound sense of empowerment, a steely resolve to forge ahead and create a life on my own terms. It was a testament to the indomitable strength of the human spirit, a reminder that even in the face of the most profound betrayals, there is always a path forward, a way to reclaim the pieces of ourselves that have been scattered by the winds of adversity. And as Hannah and I settled into our new home, a sanctuary of peace and tranquility, I found myself surrounded by a community of unwavering support. Dolores and Jackie, my steadfast allies throughout the ordeal, remained by my side, their wisdom and guidance a constant source of strength. But it was the embrace of the wider community that truly touched my heart. One by one, neighbors and acquaintances reached out, offering words of encouragement and admiration for the resilience I had shown in the face of such adversity. Their kindness— their willingness to rally around me in my time of need, was a balm for the wounds inflicted by Mara's treachery. It was a reminder that even in the darkest of times there is always a glimmer of light, a beacon of hope to guide us through the storm. As the days turned to weeks and the weeks to months, I felt a profound sense of gratitude wash over me. Gratitude for the strength and determination that had carried me through the crucible of betrayal, Gratitude for the unwavering support of those who had stood by me, and above all, gratitude for the renewed and deepened bond I shared with Hannah. 
our ordeal had forged a connection that transcended the traditional boundaries of mother and daughter, a bond tempered in the fires of adversity and strengthened by our shared commitment to healing and growth. And as I looked towards the future, I did so with a sense of optimism and purpose, secure in the knowledge that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, our resilience and our love for one another, an unbreakable force that would carry us through even the darkest of storms. For in the end, the true victory was not in the satisfaction of revenge or the exposure of Mara's deceit. It was in the reclamation of our lives, the triumph of the human spirit over the forces of manipulation and betrayal. And as the sun set on this chapter of our lives, I knew that the road ahead would be one of growth, of self-discovery, and of the unwavering pursuit of the freedom that had once been denied us. It was a journey that would be fraught with challenges, but one that we would undertake with open hearts and a renewed sense of purpose. For in the end, that is the true essence of resilience, the ability to rise from the ashes of adversity and forge a path towards a brighter, more fulfilling future.